what's up guys welcome to my channel if you are new yet my name is divine i'm a musical five minominak drummer and a keyboardist i have been for many many years i started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic make sure you follow us on instagram at the perseverance reaction in order to recommend the favorite singers for us to react to What's up YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today guys, we're back going to a new video guys. Today we're going to be reacting to how Medicare for all works in Australia. Okay. This is going to be my first time checking this out and I've never been to Australia before. So I just want to see how that system works. <laughs> and maybe I would like to visit there someday. Maybe I know how it's going to be for me if I visit it. It's going to be my first time checking this. Uh, you know how I do to talk this radio right yes, more. Let's get into this video. The 2020 Democratic primaries are in full swing as the candidates argue over the best way to approach policy. One of the biggest policy divides, the role of private health insurance. We have got to pass a Medicare for all single payer system. The private insurance is not working for tens of millions of Americans. The quickest, fastest way to do it is build on Obamacare. Many countries around the world provide government-funded universal health care while offering secondary private insurance. One country that's frequently overlooked, Australia. So how well does Australia's system work compared to U.S. health care? Okay, let's see. In 2017, now, Australia is estimated to have spent 9.2% of its GDP on healthcare, while the US spent nearly twice that at 17.1%. In other words, Australia spends about 5,000 USD per person, while the US spends over 10,000. Despite spending about half the money, Australia has better or comparable health outcomes to the US. The average life wow. expectancy in Australia is four years higher than the US, and Australia's infant mortality rate is lower. Additionally, the maternal mortality rate in America is nearly five times higher than in Australia. Australia's healthcare system is sustained by a publicly funded universal health insurance network called Medicare. Australians can also purchase private health insurance to cover hospital treatments or services that Medicare doesn't cover, such as dental or vision. But private insurance in Australia isn't meant to replace Medicare. I think it's a bit of a given that if you make above a certain amount, you just have to kind of hold your nose and buy in. That's Dr. Elizabeth Bates. She's an American who now lives and works in Tasmania, Australia. She did her medical training in both countries. For full disclosure, Dr. Bates' husband worked with the Australian government to help digitize citizens' health records. I, I hear more from people that are going through the public system a bit of, well, even if I'm not a private patient, dot, dot, dot. So there's always that fear, I think, that people won't be treated as well, which I don't think really plays out. Most Australians with private insurance receive a government rebate to help cover their monthly premiums. Also, if wow. Australians purchase hospital coverage before age 31, they avoid an extra charge on private insurance premiums for the rest of their lives. Under Australian Medicare, Seriously? doctors can set their own prices. However, many follow the Australian Medical Association's list of suggested fees. If a doctor charges more than the Medicare standard fee, the patient is responsible for the difference. These out-of-pocket costs are known as a medical gap, similar to a copay in the U.S. So how does this healthcare scheme stack up against the U.S. when it comes to the chronically ill patients who use the system the most? Crescenda Keith, an American citizen, and Christy Wilkinson in Australia both live with a rare condition called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which is also known by its initials EDS. The symptoms can vary in severity depending on the individual, making it difficult to characterize. It's a continuum. Some people have it to where it doesn't affect their day-to-day -day life, and some people I know are completely bedridden. Crescenda has changed insurance statuses several times over the years, going from private insurance that offered comprehensive coverage to no insurance to the government-funded system for low-income Americans called Medicaid. Going through with the private insurance, it was incredibly easy to get something as simple as a geneticist to diagnose me as opposed to a primary care doctor and a rheumatologist, which was amazing. And it actually, because I had racked up so many bills trying to figure out what was going on, that the geneticist, I had no copay, no nothing. But Crescenda ended up going from having private insurance to having none at all. To go from that to having nothing is is shocking. I did better. It's shocking. 
waiting until I was so sick that they had to admit me to the hospital and seeing the specialists in there and just racking up those bills, which the the hospital ends up writing off anyway. After a few years of being uninsured, Crescenda was able to get on Medicaid after a long process with a lot of bureaucratic hiccups. Finally, recently I was approved for Medicaid, which I thought was gonna be the best thing ever. That, that opens the door to a primary care and opens the door to specialists. The specialists are not even in the area. You give me an hour to get, an hour drive to get to a doctor, that's absolutely inaccessible. And at this point, you're kind of like, well, I wish I just had no insurance because that little aspect of hope is sometimes worse than accepting the, the fact that you have no hope. We're looking into filing bankruptcy because a lot of the medical bills, even though um, I was low income, for some reason, they still went to collection even though I contacted people, even some of the medical bills from when I had good insurance, where I was supposed to have no copay, are now in collections because I didn't know about them and I was moving. By comparison, Kirsty's insurance coverage has been more consistent over her lifetime. She chose to buy private insurance to help cover her expenses. She thinks that investing in private insurance in Australia is worth the extra cost for convenience and peace of mind. For me, while I'm in private, um, is choice of, you get choice of doctor, doctors. Um, choose when you have treatment, um, which is a big, which is a big plus um, because in the private in the public system, you can be waiting, you can be waiting months. If I didn't have private cover, it I think I'd be up for a lot, a lot more. Because what some people say is that you should just put the money aside. But the thing is, you don't know what's around the corner. I'm a huge fan of user universal healthcare coverage but um, nothing in this world is perfect. If somebody's got an acute problem here, they can get in very quickly, but if it's just sort of a just-in-case safety check, there's a very long wait through the public system, and that makes me nervous because we know the reason we do universal screening is somebody out there's gonna have a cancer sitting there quietly, and I would really like them to find that out before it causes a problem and spreads. True. Kirsty finds True. that while her costs may vary depending on her physician and treatment, some of her doctors take into consideration that she's a long-term patient on government disability. Because I'm on the disability support pension and the hospital I go to generally they actually bulk bill um, and the clinic I go to for my MRIs on my knee for example they actually bulk bill because I'm referred by a specialist. It really depends on I think your doctors in terms of how much how much they charge you. I mean there are doctors out there who charge a lot more than others. Americans and Australians tend to have many of the same opinions surrounding the effectiveness of their healthcare systems. Around 45% of people in both countries are concerned that their medical costs will increase over the next decade. There are some differences though. While both Australians and Americans rank the cost of accessing treatment among the top three problems facing their country's healthcare system, only 38% of Australians felt that way as opposed to 64% of Americans. Australians were evenly split on the biggest issue between cost, staff shortages, wait times, and an aging population. A big difference between the countries is that only 4% of Australians feel that their country's healthcare system needs to be completely rebuilt, while about 23% of Americans feel that way. Hmm. Crescenda and Kirsty's experiences show that both the American and Australian systems have their problems. But the Australian system does offer more consistency thanks to basic universal coverage. I think, you know, we're really lucky to have the system we have in Australia. I think Medicare um, does make it, even though you might only get half back or whatever when you're seeing doctors, at least you get something back. This is really, really good. I mean, this, so I understand what they're actually talking about when it comes to healthcare. Um, I never imagined myself looking at Australia before. I never knew the system worked that way with the Medicare. I never knew. This is my first time finding out about this. And I am in shock. <laughs> it's really impressive. And a lot of life will be saved. Like 100%. When it comes to health matters, guys, expenses have to be cut we have we need support more 
this people right here, that's how you can save their life. Because if they are not having good insurance, some of them are going to die. <laughs> I don't know how that lady survived during that period of time when she had no insurance. Because I know it's going to be draining. Very, very draining. Australians, you guys are amazing. You guys are good. Your system, it's impressive. I'm going to tell you that for sure. Your system is good. It's good, 100%. I am shocked right now. I think I have to be considering <laughs> moving there very soon. <laughs> because this is this is shocking. This is impressive. This is new to me. And I just feel like US, we, we need to make our system more better and more conducive for everyone. More conducive. The insurance policy have to be much better because if you say anyone you tell this will be like, no, 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 US insurance is way better than Australia. But when you see the stats, you will know, game. Just like this video right now, you know, Australia, you guys are good. You guys are living in luxury. <laughs> you put it that way. When it comes to healthcare, you guys are living in luxury because guys health care costs over in the u.s is really 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 ridiculous but we have to do everything to survive <laughs> we have to do everything to survive this is an amazing video and i learned a lot through this video right now and this was coming out by cnbc this is serious this is a well calculated analyzed fat so sure that you guys are lucky that's what i'm going to say this is an amazing video and i was i opened and let's load through this. Comment down below what you think about this video. Give us a thumbs up. Share this video to as many as can. Subscribe to the channel, guys. You know how it is. We'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just bought a bag. Like an old lady. I'm back wood smoking. I don't own papers. Pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitches in my bed. I got scales all